Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about three specific terms that deal with our radios. If you're at all interested in the performance of our radio systems, or you don't quite understand a few parameters that your radio is telling you about, this is going to be the video for you. The first two parameters that we're gonna talk about deal with the radio performance, and that is going to be RSSI and signal quality. Quality. And then the third and last term that we're going to go through deals with if you do not have good performance from your radio. And we're going to talk about this term being fail safe and a fail safe type mode that your radio more than likely has. And it's super important to understand. If there's only one takeaway from what we're gonna speak about in this video, the biggest thing that I would recommend is understanding the fail safe component that we're going to go through in this video. Just before we get into the video for today, I do want to thank the patrons of the RC Explained channel for all of your support and helping me along with the channel. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's start off by talking about the RSSI value. Let's first start off by defining what RSSI actually represent and means. RSSI is the Receive Signal Strength Indication. This is a value that the manufacturer will place on the radio to tell the user, such as you, what kind of signal strength you are receiving at your radio control vehicle on the receiver side of that system. Now, what's important is you can actually measure this in one specific way. However, you can have values that are told to you in multiple different ways. You can have DBM percent or a relative value that the manufacturer places on your telemetry screen to let you know what kind of signal strength you are getting. Now what I want to do is I want to spend a bunch of time on DBM because this is the core value that actually represents signal strength and although you can have it represented as other values, DBM is ultimately what is measured by your receiver. Now let's talk about our range of values for DBM. DBM is a value that is essentially unitless, which means it's really just a ratio. A zero DBM value represents a ratio of one, or it's going to be, in our case, one milliwatt of power. This is the wattage that we can associate zero DBM with. And as we go up or down by three DBM, we can have this represent as a doubling of the wattage power or a halving of the wattage power. We'll see that as we go through our range of values. Now let's take a look at our range of values. Our range of values from the left side is very weak signal strengths. And on the right hand side, we have very strong signal strengths. So as we move from right to left, we are getting weaker. And as we move from left to right, we are getting stronger signal strengths. This is important because DBM can be confusing if you don't understand this and we'll go through an example here shortly. So on the far right we're going to be talking about a few different examples here that deal with power transmission from a signal strength point of view. So this is very different than RSSI. We're going to talk about RSSI on this side of the board so keep that in mind. 27 dBm, this is a relatively large dBm value. It's maybe you can argue that this is a small dBm value from a power transmission point of view. However, at 27 dBm, this would be the typical cellular power transmission that you would see for your cellular network. And that is gonna be a 500 milliwatt value. As we move to the left, we get 17 to 20 dBm. This is going to be a lesser amount of power, power ranging from 50 to 100. And we know that it is a doubling of power here from 17 dBm because we have this three dBm rule. So going from 17 to 20, we actually double our power where 100 milliwatts is at the 20 dBm value and 50 watts, 50 milliwatts is at the 17 dBm value. This is the typical max legal RC transmitter power probably worldwide that you can use. And we probably know that guys are going above or some radio systems may also be below that as well. But this is generally what you'd see as the absolute maximum for a legal system in most parts of the world. At zero dBm, we talked about how this is a one milliwatt value of power. And as we move towards on the left-hand side of the board, remember keeping in mind that as we move towards the left, our signal strength is getting weaker. We can look at the minus 40 to about the minus 70 to minus 75 range. This is where I would specifically say that you would have typical excellent 
signal strength in RC. And this is for most systems, you could argue that this is true. A signal strength of about minus 60 is pretty good. It's fairly good. A signal strength of minus 40 is going to be even better. It's going to be stronger. So keep in mind that lower values is actually weaker. Lower as in more negative towards that negative infinity. And as we move from minus 80 to minus 100, we have another example here where in your typical 102.11 wireless network system, this is where you would have the absolute minimum for a receive signal. Now odds are at minus 100 dBm, you're not going to be able to transfer any type of files or do anything that is useful on your network. This is probably where the signal comes in and, and fades out and you cannot really do anything with it. I would expect that minus 80 to minus 60 is more on the range of a low signal strength that is required to do anything useful on the internet there. And as you move towards a even more negative value, I found this to be quite interesting. Minus 127.5 dBm, this is the typical received power from a GPS satellite. Very interesting because it is a very low value of power as it relates to the dBm value there. And one of the things to point out too is that the true zero watts of power is represented by minus infinity dBm. Just an awkward way of saying it, but that's just how it goes as the ratio of zero watts is represented by minus infinity. So now let's move in and talk about percent or even a relative value here. When we look at percent, you can imagine that percent would run from zero to 100. And you would know that at 100% signal strength, it sounds pretty good, and it probably is, or at least it should be. And then at 0%, you would expect that it's going to be extremely low, probably very bad, and it should be very bad. However, what is really important to know is this is not a measured value. This is a relative value that the manufacturer would have to set up on your specific system to represent it as a percentage. They have to select the value of dBm on this scale to represent that zero mark and they would have to represent a maximum value here as the 100% value. And this is actually a really important and good point here. I actually ran into this myself where at 0%, my radio was actually calling this out, 0% signal strength. However, it was not actually as low as the radio was telling me. And that's because someone probably picked a value of dBm that's associated with zero and they probably were conservative with this value as well. However, they were so conservative that the plane was not even all that out far out there and it was still complaining that I had low signal strength. Now I knew about this and as I was flying, I knew that this was not a problem and I was able to continue to fly, land the plane and change my settings. So now the other thing that we can talk about is this relative value. This is where a manufacturer, instead of picking zero to 100 represented by a percentage, they come up with their own scale. They can come up with their own scale from zero to 30 or zero to 12 or here it is, zero to 12, where 12 is the best and zero is the worst. And they just feed you these values. It's the same idea where 12, they have to pick a value on this scale to represent what that 12 mark is. And they also have to pick a value on this scale again, when the more negative area there to represent what zero would be. And that's essentially what RSSI is in our radio systems. Now let's take a look at an example. I have a couple examples here. I have an air example for an airplane and then I have a car example that can give us both values for dBm. So here we can see we have a dBm of about minus 50 on the air system. This specific airplane is about 30 feet away from us and we're getting a value here of dBm of minus minus 50. And the car, it's actually in the same area. I'm going to go and bring this up again so we can have the backlight. We have an RSS I value of minus 30 dBm. Again, both of these are in the range as we defined it up on the board as excellent signal strengths and that it should be provided that the plane and the car are very close, only separated by a couple walls or so. So now what I want to do is I want to change this so you can see a different value used here for dBm. Okay, and now we have the range being represent as a 100% R. This is the way that Spectrum represents signal strength for us here on the radio system. So the next thing to talk about here is our signal quality or link quality or any other way that you want to term the quality of the received signal that we get from the transmitter to the receiver on board our radio control vehicle. 
Now, RSSI told us about the strength and our link quality is going to tell us if the information is actually getting to where we want it to be received by. And there's a couple different ways that radio systems out there can do this for us. Assume that we have 10 packets of information that is going to our receiver from our transmitter every second. In every second, you can see after 10 seconds, we'd have 100 bits of information that is sent from our transmitter to our receiver. Now, there's ways that we can actually represent this on the radio. The first way is the rate of good packets of data. Let's say in that 100 sent over a 10 second period, nine of the 90 of them went through representing nine out of 10 in one specific second or 90%. This would refer to our link quality for that specific scenario. If it happened to be 98 of the 100 packets made it to our receiver, then your percentage is going to look like 98%. And that's going to be a fairly good uh, link quality right there. So then the next thing is, is what is the count of your missed or lost packets? This is something that is also represented, and we'll see an example here very shortly. You can say that a loss of 12 packets over a three minute flight. So you go and fly the airplane for three minutes, you bring it back down and your transmitter tells you that you lost 12 packets of information. This is sometimes known as fades on a specific type of radio. And this is good information, but it doesn't really tell you the full story. Typically what I like to do is find out where those packets of information were actually lost. Is it a specific spot in your field that you lost it? Or is it a specific location or orientation of your airplane or aircraft in the air? Maybe it gets at a certain angle and something is blocking the antenna and you lose a packet because of that orientation. These are all good bits of information that you want to be able to pull out, identify, analyze in order to identify if this is an issue. Now truly, if you're only losing 12 packets of information over a three minute flight, this is a really good amount of packets lost, meaning it's not a lot at all. It's a very small amount that would be relatively okay for your typical radio controlled system. So this is two different ways. Now let's jump to an example to actually show us what this looks like on our transmitter. All right, here is a typical example of a spectrum system where we have two antennas here on our FMS Bayhawk. The antenna A has lost two packets of information and antenna B has lost zero so far. So I'll see if I can actually get this to change. If we go back into our range check here, I can go into range test and we'll try to go into reduced power. Two kilometer per hour. There you go. So you can see that now, even though the signal strength is 100%, you can see that the antenna fades are actually increasing. And we have three total, four total now, and it's gonna to start to call this out on us. It's not happy that we have more than the four that I think this is programmed to. So we have nine on antenna A, and we have 17 on antenna B. Now, in the course of this time when these were accumulating, both antennas lost information at the exact same time five times. And that's what this F value, or frame loss value, represents. So if I had a signal strength of 100%, see how it, it's not truly telling us that we lost information. And if we had a high rate, this would not be ideal at all. So that kind of shows us how this part of the system works for a link quality. So now we're talking about the last component here of the three items that we were talking about. And this one's gonna deal with the fail safe or fail safing of your equipment. Now this ultimately deals with the scenario that plays out where you don't have any transmission from the transmitter reaching the receiver. In which case the receiver is going to go in what is known as a fail safe mode. Most common receivers out on the market are going to have this ability to go to a predetermined set functions for every channel on your specific receiver. Now, there's a, a few reasons as to why you get this scenario. The first one is if you have low signal uh, strength and you run out of range essentially, this is what could ultimately lead to a fail safe area. Or let's say you have a low uh, link quality. This could be due to interference, even having a stronger signal 
you can run into the situation where you don't have any reception by your receiver and your radio is going to go into fail safe mode. Or what happens is your radio is off. Your radio can turn off by you yourself or maybe you drop it and it breaks or becomes unplugged. And this is yet another condition that can introduce this fail safe mode. What I'd like to do is challenge everyone that's watching this video, take each one of your radio controlled airplanes, cars, boats, planes, helicopters, whatever it is that you have and try this out. If you have a plane, remove the propeller. If you have a car, remove all of the wheels, set it up in such a way so that you are taking maybe 25% throttle and operating your radio control car. Then what I want you to do is shut off the signal or the radio for that car and see what happens. Ultimately what you want is you want that car to go to 0% throttle, so essentially off, and then if you have a car, you actually do want the brakes to come on so that you can slow that car down. If you have an airplane, you wanna make sure that at the very least that engine or that electric motor is going to go to 0% throttle. So that's the thing. If it does not do that, you need to set your fail safe. And as we discussed, a minimum of 0% throttle is the requirement for essentially any RC. If you have a car, you want the brakes to be applied so that car can slow down and not become a threat if it's not under the control of yourself. If you have a plane, maybe in addition to this 0% throttle, you want to include some rudder, aileron, elevator, elevator combination or something there to help out. And the reason why you may want to do this is if you have a plane that glides very well, like a good trainer or so, you don't want that trainer to lose reception, go to 0% throttle and continue along the path. If it's 400 feet in the air, it very well could travel at least another 400 feet on land and end up in a place where you don't know what exists outside of that sort of field of range. This is why you may want to have a combination of a rudder aileron and elevator if needed to just allow that plane to do a slow turn so that it can come back to where you originally had it or at the very least it can make a few circles and land itself or crash itself whatever actually happens with that system at the end of the day maybe what happens is it turns around comes right back in signal strength you could pick it up and continue on where you last left it i don't know but at the very least you want to make sure that your fail safe is set correctly on every single radio controlled vehicle that you have. And this is a very easy item to identify on the radio. All I did is actually turned off the transmitter of this radio to get what is known as a hold. So a hold here tells me that the airplane went into fail safe mode. And this is how I'm able to identify it on my radio. You never wanna see any value beside H other than zero. Zero is the only acceptable value here. If you see a hold of one, two, three, then you have big issues that need to be resolved. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.